I have the four the four things that I was looking for, I found. And now you can really spend time on the bigger things. Like you can spend time in philosophy and yeah, in bonding and making the friendship better and making each other better. Like with Bitcoin is it's really people helping each other constantly, but it's not like, oh, that guy helped me. That's one. That guy gave me the tools to help myself. Hello, everyone. I am very excited for today's guest. As I was telling Mr. Hoddle Harry before we started recording, one of my biggest inspirations when I first started podcasting was John Ballas and his style uh, on Bitcoin Rapid Fire, his show. He, he brings on people he's never talked to before and just turns it into a way to make a new friend and just has them tell their story. And it's a really cool format where, you know, you're sort of both starting from zero and building it up from there just so the audience can all get to know together. So Hoddle Harry is here. We've never talked before. We had like two messages on Noster and here we are. It's just decided this guy has a cool story to tell. Let's see what happens. So Hoddle Harry, thank you so much for joining me, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Ben. <laughs> I'm so, uh, very excited to be here. Yeah, man. Well, uh, the reason why I, I knew I could bring you on and we'd have some cool things to talk about is because you are one of the rare individuals out there who has all three of the trifecta figured out that I, I pound so hard, the Bitcoin, Noster, and Carnivore. I think mm -hmm. those are three very powerful things that are just helping so many people upgrade their lives right now altogether. So... As we were talking about before, it it might be, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll just play it by ear. But you know, we yeah. we have a. It's like each of us has our own story for each of these things. How we found each of them. So to go through the story for everyone, <laughs> maybe too much. But we'll see what happens. But uh, why don't you just give us some background on who you are, where you came from, and how you found whichever of these things that you would like to share with us today? Uh, yeah. So. Um, uh... I don't know where to start, really. <laughs> I, will, I will just uh, try to minimize everything. Like, the main reason that helped me got into Bitcoin, Carnivore, and Noster is actually my best friend. He's uh, called Stacking Beats on Noster. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, it started with Bitcoin. I, I uh, moved abroad. <laughs> to Indonesia to live with the girl I was in love with and to start a business. And I was doing an uh, internet business, selling uh, dog products and cat products. And I was uh, kind of happy with it, but um, I also didn't finish my high school when I was younger. So it was always a bit of a struggle in the fiat world. And uh, like for me, business was going good for quite a while. And I was telling my friend and he was into crypto, not yet uh, full Bitcoin yet. And uh, yeah, we were talking and after a while, business was not really going that great anymore. And yeah, my friend was always saying like, yeah, you should check out Bitcoin. <laughs> and uh yeah, he was, I, I saw he was quite passionate about it, but he wasn't really all in yet. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he just kept re recommending Bitcoin, like even joking, like I should sell my, my products and my store just to buy Bitcoin. And I was like, yeah, guy, are you serious? And yeah, he was serious. And I know he doesn't really joke around. So I was like, yeah, I should also have a look at it. And uh Due to certain circumstances, I had to go back to my home country. <laughs> so I tried Belgium, to Belgium, say... just so people know you're from Belgium. I think yeah, that's yeah. a cool note to add. I think you're, you're definitely the first Belgian we've had on the podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, and then I started working. And I think like three months after I got back and I was already working, I had a knee injury. And... uh yeah, suddenly you, you have some time on your hand. Like I couldn't do anything for like three, four months. And I remember it was 
I was playing a game, I don't know, I think it was Destiny, and I was so sick and tired of playing the same thing, and yeah, my buddy was still recommending Bitcoin, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just put in some money in it, and then... Uh, I like this guy, man, he he was relentless, Yeah, we but he, should be. <laughs> he, he, he knew what he was doing, so yeah, and I, I trusted him, so I was like, yeah, let's try it, and uh, then when I... Uh, had my knee surgery i also discovered because i was living abroad and came back like i lost my uh, my health insurance i lost um how do you say like uh, if you're unemployed like you get the government like benefit. your benefits or the yeah, yeah, yeah. unemployment i think we call it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and uh yeah suddenly <laughs> i was in belgium trying to save for my future and i couldn't work i didn't have any income i had a thousand euro ahead in bitcoin like i i i just blew it <laughs> and then after a while suddenly my buddy says yeah he's like uh all in with bitcoin <laughs> and i'm like yeah what do you mean all in and he's like yeah all my savings everything into bitcoin and i was like yeah, you're crazy guy, you're crazy. And I have a lot of, I not, not experience, but I know a lot of about uh, scams and MLMs and snake oils. <laughs> and I was saying to him like, yeah, guy, uh, I'm going to prove how you're wrong. I'm going to prove how you will get scammed. <laughs> and I think three months later, I was a Bitcoin maxi. I was like, yeah, I'm also going all in. <laughs> And then, yeah, um, I'll try to switch the conversation to carnivore. I uh, ended up watching the Jordan Peterson with the Save Dynamus, the the immaculate conception, Bitcoin versus fiat. And I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. I, this, I, it's not... I, you're watching people that aren't telling you lies like this is all e- economics and reality and uh, a bit later my friend <laughs> kept rem- recommending um, deep nutrition with dr k shanahan was it the same friend or different friend the same one the yes same i one. love this guy so much yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i also love him <laughs> and um then I started learning about seed oils and yeah, you, you realize like I'm eating chips, I'm eating pizza, I'm eating all this industrial, industrial garbage. And I was also hurting from inflammation in my elbow, like a tennis elbow, but it, it was like one and a half year almost like it just, a it just kept being inflammated and and uh, and hurting. So then, after watching Kate Shanahan, I didn't really stop eating seed oils. Like it, it always takes a little while. And at a certain time, I was just tired of feeling in pain because I also had a whole period where I didn't work. And I thought the pain would go away or everything would heal, but it just kept coming back. Even if I had one day without pain, like if I was driving a motorbike and I would hit a puddle, like instantly the pain came back. And then you start to realize like, this is not normal. And uh, yeah, I, I tried to go uh, seed oil free, not really carnivore. But once you're going seed all free, like you start to realize, yeah, there's nothing really that you can eat except uh, animal-based products. <laughs> and yeah, from the moment I started really trying to do the seed all free diet or carnivore, I think one or two weeks later, my pain was gone. Like I couldn't believe it. Like I tried everything for one and a half years and yeah just switching my diet helped like i was like this 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 is amazing (laughs) like there's there's so much truth to be found in bitcoin that's why i wanted to give it a chance after seeing seifedean because he was telling so much truth about uh yeah money and bitcoin 
so then uh yeah then i was uh doing the carnivore but i still had some guilty pleasures <laughs> like i was still eating chocolate but i was i was checking every package i wanted to see if they contained seed oils or not but with the chocolate i was buying i i because it was a more expensive brand and it didn't reference any seed oils. I was like, yeah, this should be okay. But I found out there's like a emulsifier lecithin. <laughs> and yeah, yeah it's just it's a like different... Like a tin or something? Yeah, like yeah a, I, I think I know. Just some crap. Like, <laughs> yeah, although yeah, yeah. if you don't know how to pronounce the word, then you shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's true, it's true. Yeah, then I found out it's just a different word for seed oils. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have to stop eating this. And yeah, once I really changed I, for the most part, even when I was still eating the chocolate, I felt so much better. Like I, I have uh, two knees with uh, two knee surgeries and yeah, when your body is inflammated, like everything hurts, like uh, not your whole body, but the things that are broken really hurt. <laughs> and now I'm getting up out of bed. I feel energetic. I feel happy. I feel positive. Like I really had to even adjust my mindset. Like I, I wasn't used to waking up in a good mood or in a good physical health and then after carnivore yeah you, you yeah you just feel a hundred times better than you ever did absolutely because... and that, that's such a common thing that people report just the the mental side and i would say that was the biggest thing for me mm -hmm. i didn't really have any major injuries or like really debil debilitating problems. Like for me, I just feel so much more energized and motivated mm -hmm. and just have so much more drive to just create and change the world, you know? And, and yeah, I think that's yeah. just a, a product of just our hormones being healed up. First of all, like we're getting so much more cholesterol, which we've all been scammed into thinking was a bad thing for all these years. <laughs> yeah. And now we know, Oh wait, cholesterol is essential for your brain and your hormones. It's good for you. It's literally good for you. It's the exact opposite of what they've been saying. <laughs> so now that we just have tons of cholesterol, we feel amazing. Our brains are working better. Our hormones are better. Our testosterone is higher. And like, that's so important. And, and I'm with you. I just, I, I jump out of bed every morning. I'm ready to go start my day and do things and create stuff. And it's, it's such a difference than it used to be. I hated the mornings. I would snooze the alarm like four times plus just like, ah, uh, just like had to drag myself out to get started. And that was like a, a normal daily thing every single day. And I can't remember the last time I did that. Like when I wake <laughs> up, I'm excited. Like, yes, let's go. It's, yeah. it's just a game changer for life. It's true. <laughs> it's really a whole different life. <laughs> so a couple of things to highlight there. We'll, we'll move on to Noster next, but a couple of things just from your story so far that I love is one is how you had this knee injury and you turn the bad into good. I think yeah. this is such an important lesson for people to really internalize is that whenever life throws some bullshit at you, there's a way to turn it into good. Like, mm -hmm. and th there are a lot of stories like that where people get some really bad injury and they're bedridden. And that's when they start reading books. Yeah, And I've heard so many stories of people just learning so many things from that experience that for folks out, I'm, I'm actually kind of crazy. I have a, a, a specific notepad saved in my, in my note folder on my computer of all the things I want to learn. If I ever get a bad injury, <laughs> yeah, okay. like I already have a contingency plan. If, you know, if I just, you know, just randomly get hit by a car for something and I'm just like stuck in bed for a while, it's like a bunch of really sedentary things. Like, I would love to learn how to produce music. I want to watch every single Oscar nominated movie and rate them all. And you know, these sorts of things that I don't want to do now when I'm able bodied and I just don't, I don't need more things to sit on my ass for, but in case that does happen, I'm ready to go. I've, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm going to start learning right away. You know, I think that it, that's not a bad idea. I just randomly thought of that one day, but I, for me, that works. Um, yeah, the, 
there's a whole world to discover. <laughs> yeah. And some of it just really does require grinding and like sitting, reading, watching YouTube videos, podcasts, all that. And so it's all about just balancing the activity level. Because for me, I, I really want to be active every day. So it's, I don't want to stack on more things that require sitting, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is why podcasts are so good. And you mentioned safety and Jordan Peterson's podcast. I'm really glad you brought that up because um, there, there's only a small handful of podcasts out there where I actually like remember where I was when I listened to it. I, I remember that one specifically. I was living in Northern California, working a just a fiat job. And after my work, I'd always just go for a long walk around the neighborhood. And I listened to that podcast and just thought like, man, it's so cool to be able to listen to these guys talk, you know, because yeah. they both have so much to offer. And like you, Saifedean was huge for me as well. He, mm. he definitely won me over on Bitcoin with the Bitcoin standard. I think finding that book was what really put me over the edge and just got me over the crypto level, which I was stuck in for an, an embarrassingly <laughs> long time. Like 2017 to 2020, I had a shitcoin blog and just thought that was, I was going to find the next Bitcoin like everyone else. <laughs> um, the Bitcoin standard finally put that to bed for me. And that's why I just spam it everywhere. Like, just read this book. You got to read this book, read this book. <laughs> <laughs> and for the carnivore side too, because he talks about carnivore quite a bit. And yeah. once you just hear how right someone is about so many other things, like you mentioned your friend and also safety. The more times someone just continues to be right, the more your mind opens up to their ideas. <laughs> so hey, of course you're... I thought carnivore sounded insane, but I said, screw it, let's try it. And so that was sort of the last thing for me. And just so thankful for, there's so many Bitcoiners that are like that, where I just know that they are due diligence researchers. Like they have done the work. They're not just going to spout off out of nowhere. They Like they're going to have reasons and first principle thinking behind everything that they put out there most, for the most part, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and when you find the right people, you just learn so much. So that's, that's really powerful. And I'm just thankful to be in a community for it. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you get into Bitcoin, you really start living life verifiably. <laughs> like you just want to verify things. You're sick and tired of being lied to like, Fiat is so destructive and so uh, deceitful. And then you come into the Bitcoin space and like, yeah, everything suddenly becomes positive. Like before we want to switch to Noster, I want to uh, also add a few things with the carnivore. But I also want to ask you a few things. Um, Absolutely, yeah. When listening to your podcasts... Uh, you talk a lot about brain fog. Um, can you maybe elaborate on that? I, I, for me, I know what you mean, but maybe for other people that don't yeah. know. For like what it is and how carnivore yeah, yeah. helps it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really think that pretty much everyone out there eating a standard American or standard Belgian diet, <laughs> pretty much all the same. Um Everyone eating lots of carbs and let alone seed oils, even worse, mm -hmm. they're going to have some level of brain fog. And for my whole life, I thought that I had a pretty good mental state because I was surrounded by people that had a worse mental state. So my frame of rest reference was that I'm doing pretty good. You mm -hmm. know, like this, this person I'm friends with is having like random anxiety attacks every other day. So like I've, I'm not having that. So I'm very thankful, you know, but it, the frame of reference is just terrible right now because everyone is sick. Everyone has some sort of mental issues. Like mental health is just tanking everywhere all the time. It's like normal for kids to have ADHD in school. People have depression and anxiety and all this stuff just as a given, which is crazy. And, and I think brain fog is just another thing that sort of fits into that bucket, but that's more of a, gradual small like just underlying problem that people don't even know they have <laughs> and it's insidious because you when you have this issue it's harder to articulate the problem yourself you you, you can't really dig your way out of the hole because you aren't able to think so well <laughs> so you can't really think about it objectively so this is why i am just so persistent with people who 
I think have like an extra gear that they're not tapping into. Mm-hmm. If I can just sort, you can just sort of sense when people just, you know, they had struggle a little bit to find their words or, you know, some, sometimes they, they are aware of it and they just feel like they just feel like they're in a fog or they, they feel like things aren't coming to them clearly like they should. I think that's a problem. It's really just your brain is starving for more fat. Like your, your brain is made almost entirely of fat. So you need to give it fat in order to operate at a high level. And like we were talking earlier too, it needs cholesterol. Mm. Cholesterol is the most important thing for your brain. So if you're not giving it that dietary cholesterol, then you're, you're going to have a bad time. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. let alone like the, the people that are being put on statins, um, all these medications that the pharmaceutical industry is pushing on to people are just making it worse. They, there, I, I think every medication out there, or at least for sure, the statins are well known to increase brain fog and just give people mental issues. Mm-hmm. So, and, and it's all for a stupid problem that doesn't exist in the first place. To lower cholesterol, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so it's, it's just completely the only reason this is still being pushed is because it makes them a lot of money. That's it. Mm-hmm. It makes the pharmaceutical money, uh, pharmaceutical industry, lots of money. That's why they keep pushing it. It's like, I forget how many hundreds of billions of dollars it is. It's just massive. It's huge industry. And uh, yeah, people need to just completely cut all that stuff out with, you know, caution. If if you're on a bunch of drugs, you don't want to go cold turkey and just go completely carnivore. It might be too big of a shift. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, look into this, do your research and consider carnivore because, you're removing the plant toxins, which are filled with the defense chemicals and the the negative side effects of like oxalates and leptins and these things that clog up your system. Human beings aren't meant to eat plants. So like when we do that, we get clogged up systems and we also get inflammation like your problem. You talked about yeah. how your your pain that you were having. So many people think that if they have an injury like you had that they're just doomed to be in excruciating pain for the rest of their life. But I've heard stories of people who have like bone on bone joint issues, but they went carnivore and the pain is gone. Like the bone is still rubbing against each other. Like, you know, their injury is still there, but because they've reduced the inflammation so much, they don't feel the pain. So they can actually live their life. Um, so, so many interesting things that happen when you just remove the plant toxins, the, the defense chemicals, and just go really high fat carnivore. Just eat fatty meat, butter, bacon, and eggs every day. That's all we eat. That's all I've eaten for so long now. And I, I'm just never going back because I feel amazing. And you, you had the same thing. You had an even more uh, clear of a contrast there when you went from your plant diet to the meat diet. Every, everything feels better. <laughs> yeah the thing is i never really did like a bland diet or like a vegan i i always wanted meat or eggs or something yeah, from an animal and when i was learning about bitcoin i don't know if this was brain fog but i really couldn't concentrate like i was looking at the white paper and every every five seconds my mind was going like yeah j- just go and check Facebook, go and check Instagram, like do something that's not challenging you. (laughs) That's such, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is something that I quickly notice Hmm. whenever I throw in a cheat day, which I I have done. I haven't been a hundred percent since I started. I I experiment and I take notes because I just think it's interesting. And whenever I have a cheat day and throw some carbs in, I can feel the next day I just, revert to an npc for a while you know i'm not sure if you've done this but i literally can catch myself doing exactly what you said i'm just like doom scrolling on my phone you know i I just turn on a tv and watch baseball instead of get work done i i just don't feel like you know grinding on my goals it's and and then when you feel that again it's like oh my gosh i just remembered like i you know i had some cake for a birthday party last night that's exactly why (laughs) <laughs> I am just lower level brain function right now. That's what it is. And that's why so many people in the world are just like that all the time is because that's what they're eating all the time. <laughs> yeah. It all comes down to diet. It's crazy. Yeah. You would be surprised how much uh, comes down to diet. Huh? <laughs> 
But with me, I can honestly say I got I I didn't get rid of the brain fog, but I could at least fight against it when I was I after I really understood Bitcoin, like. <laughs> Getting Bitcoin really elevated my capacity of thinking and learning so I so by so much. It's it's incredible. And then afterwards, when you also start focusing on the diet, it gets even easier. Like uh, for me, there's nothing in this world I cannot learn. Like I know if I put the time in it and I really really focus on it, I can learn anything I want. Yeah, and Bitcoin is such a, a world opener because it just it opens your mind to so many other things. And, and when you read a book like the Bitcoin Standard and the sequel, the Fiat Standard, it really breaks down how fiat money causes all of these problems in the world. And the solution is so much simpler than we ever thought it would be, because mm -hmm. I definitely grew up in a household my whole life. I just thought, oh, like there's it's just overwhelming the amount of problems there are in the world. And to be in this mindset of thinking that some new politician is going to fix everything or, you know, just throwing money everywhere. at certain things at donors and all that. It's just a total mess. Yeah. And the real way that you fix it from the root is by fixing the money and just removing the money printer from the game, which is the, like the government's ultimate tool. It is, as I like to say, the death star here. <laughs> it's causing all of those downstream problems that we see. And uh, whether it's, you know, the ridiculous dietary guidelines that keep getting pushed, telling us cholesterol is bad for you, take all these drugs, holistic health is a scam or whatever. Um, it's just, it's an endless rabbit hole. And it all starts with the money, which is why Bitcoin is such a core piece of this puzzle and why every Bitcoiner just, if you start talking to them, their brain is just going to start running wild like we're doing right now. Just talk, Like, how does yeah. a Bitcoiner get super into health and diet? Well, it's because we figure out that the whole reason that the dietary guidelines are so fucked is because the government had the money printer. They showered these corrupt lobbyists with infinite money to do all this marketing. And they got to pay off all the scientists to do bogus studies and pay off all these journals and science journals to publish nonsense. And so it all really comes back to the money printer. Bitcoin mm. fixes that. Yeah, it's really like follow the money, find the incentives. <laughs> like uh, as soon as you start following money in the, in the dietary guidelines, you, you'll find like, yeah, they're just producing crap because it's cheap and they, they lie to you saying it's, it's healthy and nutritional. Yeah. Have you read The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz, that book? If I'm very honest, I don't read that much, actually. I, I that... just try to consume as much podcasting or, or Noster commenting that I can. I'm also uh... still working a fiat job full time, so... Yeah, but for sure. As soon as I get more time, I will also start learning more. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that book, The Big Fat Surprise, is like the Bitcoin standard of the diet world. It okay. pretty much walks through the whole history of those dietary guidelines and how we got to where we are today, where every single thing we hear from doctors and nutritionists in the government is the exact opposite of the truth. That's <laughs> the big question is, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> and that book walks you through the whole thing. I, and I did a podcast with the author, Nina Teichold. I think it was like episode eight or something in the first 10. Mm -hmm. So if you're more in a podcast, listen to her. She, she kills it. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. Have you watched anything or read anything from Dr. Kate Shanahan? You know, I, I know she follows me on Twitter and I was super excited to see that because she's amazing. I know she's like one of the, the major seed oil disrespecters out there, which I always love. And uh, so I, I, I should connect with her to do a podcast for sure. I would love to bring her on and talk about that because I haven't really done any seed oils specific episodes, which I, I feel like once you get to carnivore, you're kind of like a few levels above that already. So I haven't yeah. really taken the time to step back and do the seed oils part. But like you, that was the first thing that really got me rolling and got the gears turning to mm -hmm. start fixing all of the different pieces of the health 
tree, you know? So it, that's actually a really good idea. I should reach out to her. She, she's excellent. I know that her, her book, you mentioned deep nutrition is highly cited by lots of the, uh, the carnivore doctors out there. So I should give it a look for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, um, man. Should, we, should we dive into Noster? How did that come around? That's, that's the new piece of this puzzle. Was uh, there anything go- else you wanted to touch on first? Did you have some other questions? Uh, I'm going to check my notes a bit. <laughs> yeah, no rush. You're good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just have a few funny things to say and maybe a few anecdotes. <laughs> Let's hear it. Like also with the Fiat Foods and all these, <laughs> all this industrial garbage, it's not only unhealthy for people, it's also unhealthy for the environment. But I think we both know in what cases, but it's also, if you see garbage on the street, like you never see like a tenderloin on the street. It's always like this Fiat garbage food that's on the street littering. Like, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to mention this. (laughs) And I don't know how it is with you, but... uh, there's a lot, a, a lot. I've seen carnivore people also eating butter, and I, I remembered a, a, a while ago I was watching something like that, and I was like, why, why would you eat butter? And a few, few days ago, a few days ago, I didn't have any bacon, and yeah, I kind of need my fats, yeah, for my work to to keep going. And yeah, I was I was staring at my butter, and yeah, I was like, I I need some fats, so I just took a spoon and it just ate a piece of butter, and I was like, yeah, now I'm doing the thing that I that I found so ridiculous before. <laughs> and yeah, it once helped. your once your your neurons and your your natural nourishment signals heal themselves, you start to crave things you never thought you would before. Um, yeah, and- I will say I've never gotten to the level of just nomming down straight butter. I, <laughs> I know a lot of people do. Um, and I, I say have at it. If you're craving it, go for it. It's good for you. It's full of yeah, vitamins. Yeah. You know, it's, it's going to give you that fat, give you the energy. It's not going to clog your arteries like you've been told. It, like if you're craving <laughs> it, get it. Yeah, it's it's so sad when people say things to you like money is evil fat makes you fat calories in calories out and you know it's just bullshit eh? you know they just don't know better and i don't know how is it with you and your friends but when i'm trying to give good advice to my friends like I also don't want to be the preachy guy, but they really get annoyed with me. And it's like, yeah, guys, I'm just trying to help. uh. (laughs) It's tough. And I feel like every single one of us is that crazy friend in our group. And you had your crazy friend and he was able to punch through the defenses. I never had like a a crazy friend that was badgering me. I just heard enough people say it on the Internet to start paying attention. I actually I did have a college roommate who got me into crypto. But Mm -hmm. he is still into crypto, unfortunately. I (laughs) even he got me into crypto way back in 2017. I climbed through the levels, found Bitcoin in 2020. So now I'm actually going back and trying to tell him, like, bro, Bitcoin is the real deal. Um, But yeah, I mean, this is this is the struggle for everyone out there right now who who has climbed out of Plato's cave. You know, (laughs) the meme of the, the people watching the shadows on the wall. And when you when you've been outside and you've seen the sun and you know that they're being lied to, you want to just grab them by the collar and just shake them awake and pull them out. But it's it's so tough to do that if people aren't ready for it. And that has been just a a harsh truth that I've definitely have to come to in the last year is that most of my quote unquote normie friends (laughs) are just not going to come around until, you know, the things that we know are going to happen start happening, especially with Bitcoin. You know, when that number just starts exploding upward, that's when they're going to come back to me and start asking questions and buy it when it's much more expensive. (laughs) And that's just kind of how it works. Um, And same thing for carnivore, except instead of being pushed into it by number go up, they're getting pushed into it by health go down. (laughs) They're, They're going to run into health issues and, 
they're going to remember me talking to them or, you know, any of us carnivore preachers, just how, oh yeah, this, this fixes every single thing because it's all inflammation everywhere. Like it all comes down to inflammation all over, meets the most anti-inflammatory, gives you the most vitamins, most nutrients, the best satiation. It cuts off your uh, hunger signals where they're supposed to cut off. So it's like impossible to get fat on this diet. Um, all, so many people are just gaining weight out there. And I'm not sure how it is in Belgium right now, but I, I travel around quite a bit. Whenever I come back to the USA, it's jarring how, you know, my, my, my two visits a year back in the US, USA, roughly, I can just see the difference every single time I come back. That there's just more and more overweight, inflamed, just people just drudging along. Their faces are drooping more. They're just tired. They're exhausted. Um, and a lot of times they have a, you know, a salad in hand, you know, they're eating fruit smoothies and salads and all the stuff they've been told were good for them. Even the people who aren't eating trash are having a bad time because yeah. they haven't been taught that every single plant, whether it's, you know, a, a plant, a corn chip, a bag of corn chips, or if it's a salad or if it's an apple, those things all just turn into sugar. They glycate your cells. They lower your mitochondrial function and they turn into fat on your body and they just bring down your energy levels. So carnivore is the solution to so many people's issues. And uh, just all we can do is just keep throwing the bone out there as the saying goes. And uh, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's kind of the, the phrase that sticks with me when I've just been trying to beat it into someone's head for so long it just continues to not work you gotta just let it go and just make sure that they know you are available for when they are ready mm -hmm. that's also the sad thing like even if they want help like you can just give them the tools they they have to do the work themselves and when your body is sick and inflammated and your mental health is not good like it's gonna be a struggle, huh? like it's so difficult. I, I, I've been there. Like I, I understand how difficult it is, but people don't really want to do the work. Hey, the, 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 yeah. Most of the people I talk to. <laughs> and it is that it's a, it's a death spiral. It's, it's tough to dig them out of because like you said, their brain function is actually lowered. It's mm -hmm. suppressed by the way they're eating so it's harder for them to work through these things yeah and like you said giving them the right tools basically figuring out what sort of content do they enjoy consuming you know like the, the best thing someone can do is just give them you know a book that has everything like the bitcoin standard or the big fat surprise that will walk them through everything but a lot of times that's too much for people they don't oh it's like i don't have time to read a book i you know i have i have my job i gotta watch my netflix every night i I'm always eating snacks. So I have no time to do anything else. <laughs> you know, just, whole lives revolved around eating this shit food, um, <laughs> which is why YouTube and podcasts are usually my go-to now. I don't shove books in everyone's faces like I used to. I feel like a short, like 30 minute to one hour to even two hour podcast is usually the best way to get people because anyone can find time for that uh, at some point. And if they don't, then they, they really are just not even worth giving your energy to. If they're not going to sit down and watch a single video or podcast, then I, I just wouldn't waste my time on them. Yeah, that's that's the problem also with this podcast. I don't know how long it's going to be, but um, I still have one normie friend that I interact with. I decided not to interact with all of the others because it's just so draining. And even my friend, like, I know he means well. And he also said he would watch uh, the podcast, but yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> like good for yeah. him if he does, but they can also look at the movie, but they're not really there at the moment. They don't have the focus to stay focused for such a long time. Yeah. And this is really why I have just shifted my focus to building resources to help people when they're ready. Because when you just keep running into the wall of being unable to, you know, take someone to higher levels of the rabbit hole, I found it just the way that I can 
selfishly just feel productive myself and not feel like I'm wasting my time is to do something like start this podcast. I mean, that's definitely a big part of why I started a podcast yeah. because I want to have somewhere that I can send people when they come back to me inevitably and say, oh shit, like you're right about this and you're right about this and I need to learn like Bitcoin and carnivore and Noster. Okay, I'm finally ready now. I won't have time to, you know, spend hours with every single person that comes back to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I am going to say, here, I built this podcast for you. In the meantime, this is where you will get the entire rabbit hole journey right here. And feel free to reach out if you have specific questions, you know, but um, just organizing things in a way where you can give people those resources, have them ready to go. And to me, that's been just so good for my mental health because <laughs> <laughs> it's so frustrating when you just want to help everybody all the time and you just can't, you know? So uh, just being able to angle your energy in a positive direction is, is huge. It's also one of the things that helped me with a carnivore Nostra and Bitcoin. Like you just want to help people, but then, uh, they ask you questions and yeah, if you don't know enough about the subject, then yeah, you have to study some more. Like the most of my studying I did was just to answer my friends' questions. But even if I could answer them, like it doesn't help. Like they have to look at it themselves. <laughs> yeah, people have to figure it out on their own terms. They, they, yeah. they can't really be dragged through it. Like I always use that analogy, but they have to find their own way through in order for it to really click. Mm -hmm. That's definitely true. Maybe before we switch to Nostr, I want to say one more thing with uh, Carnivore. Sure. It's also applicable to Bitcoin, but it made my life so much simpler. Like, when I look at certain people, like it's also family members and stuff, the amount of trash they have... Like I also still have trash, but it's mostly like my plastics and paper, like food. I, I don't have any trash food. Like I just eat everything and I'm doing carnivore a bit on a budget. Like I'm not eating steaks every day, but I'm uh, mostly eating minced meat. And like, yeah, you just take one or two kilo, you, you just... <laughs> cook and bake your meat and yeah, you can eat for like two, three days. You don't have to prepare again. You just need to heat it up. Like carnivore is really like the fast food people should eat. <laughs> yeah, that's totally true. And just the wastefulness side, you, you mentioned this earlier too, how like when you see the, the, the garbage just laying around, you never see a steak on the ground because <laughs> people inherently know that that's valuable. And yeah. these, you know, these loose bags of leaves are not like, it's just too deeply ingrained in our brain that, you know, the, the meat is coveted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when you, you look at behind a grocery store, their big dumpster they have back there with all their, their waste, yeah, you're yeah, never yeah. going to see meat there. It's always going to be just piles and piles of celery and cucumbers and cantaloupes and watermelon. It's like all the plant products. And, you know, of course, and well, you're not going to see the non-perishable stuff like the bags of chips because those last forever. Mm -hmm. Those are literally, you know, made of chemicals yeah, to yeah. last forever on the shelf. So they're always going to be on the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> and the things that are perishable, like the the of the perishable things, it's always going to be the plants that are thrown out. And even when I was eating a very plant-heavy diet, it was impossible to manage all of these different plants I had in my fridge at all times. I would be throwing out tons of stuff, even no matter how, how hard I tried, like, yeah. you know, the, the second you open that spinach bag, it's a race against the it's clock. You better bad. be just chowing down <laughs> spinach for every meal or you're going to have just like this wilted, you know, gross smelling spinach <laughs> in just a few days. So no matter how hard I tried, I'd always be throwing away, you know, a bunch of this stuff. And it, like you said, my, my total waste, not just like my, my food waste is zero. Like, I mean, just bones from some of the steaks I have and you can just bury those in the dirt. That's great compost, you know, yep. um, just a tiny bit of, you know, packaging for, for the steaks and the meat. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I never waste food. 
compared to when I had so much plants, it's just night and day difference. Like I, I, I never actually measured how often I took the garbage out and, you know, all the, just my overall waste depending on each diet, but it's dramatically reduced. I just produce so much less garbage and that's, that's so much better for the environment. Like you said, people that think that plant-based eating is good for the environment, they don't take these things into account, let alone all the, the monocropping and the agricultural involved, which just makes the vegan diet the absolute worst for environmental destruction and eating just all beef animal products from good, happy animals. I'm here back in my hometown right now. There's a local farm nearby where I just picked up three dozen eggs this morning. Get my beef there too. I got like a giant box of ground beef for like 350 bucks. It's going to last me the whole month. <laughs> That's the way to go, man. It's the <laughs> best for your body, for your health, for the environment, for the animals, for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really sad once you yeah, see the effects of fiat in health, in money, a globally with environment it's it's really sad but luckily there's people like you trying to spread the message i'm trying to do my part doing also. Our best out here <laughs> yeah yeah that's all we can do is our best to spread the message yeah okay shall we go to nolster let's do it i i <laughs> love saving this one for last because this is the one that the least people have heard of out there in the world and it's one of the things i'm most excited about so i, I love getting into this let's let's hear it man yeah the thing is uh, i'm quite new with everything so it's quite nice that i can talk about nasser i cannot really go into the technical thingies but i i'm a daily user of nasser <laughs> me neither i'm i'm a non-technical idiot i just like posting bullshit on social media and just getting zaps for it yeah yeah like getting paid easy everyone should yeah. be doing that <laughs> yeah with Noster, i think this week i already said like five or six times like god i love Noster. i <laughs> like i love the community i love the things you can find in it i i love the value you can give and you can receive but I'll start with the beginning, how I got into Noster. Um, after being into Bitcoin, after a while, I deleted my Facebook. I didn't need it. Instagram, I never used it. TikTok, I, I never watched that even. But then there was still Twitter because it was the only space I could find some fellow Bitcoiners. <laughs> But then suddenly, yeah, you get the message like Elon Musk is going to buy Twitter. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I don't I don't really hate people, but yeah, Elon Musk is, <laughs> yeah, for me, he's just yeah, a scumbag and a scammer and a charlatan. <laughs> so he's I didn't still want to... reposting Doge accounts. Like he's still talking about Dogecoin. It's crazy. Like this yeah, guy but, will just yeah. never get over that. Yeah, he's just a government puppet, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter. So I needed a place to connect with Bitcoiners, <laughs> and suddenly, yeah, my good friend <laughs> who helped me with everything, he said, like, yeah, there's this thing called Noster. <laughs> I was like, okay, man, let's go all in on Noster. <laughs> three for three. He's just bad. Yeah, out. yeah, I love but, it. The good thing with him is with him is he has a lot of free time. But people can have a lot of free time and don't use it well. He had a lot of free time and and used it well. And yeah, if I'm being honest, you should have had my friend on here instead of me, but he's a bit shy and he's also busy doing um translation work for the consensus network. So I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, well, yeah, hey, I, I can connect and see if he wants to come on. It'd be fun to have both you guys on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> and I, I want to hear what his, his, you know, what his next ideas are. Cause he's got a great track record here. <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's quite hard into philosophy now. <laughs> yeah. He also got me like, you have the trifecta of Noster carnivore Bitcoin but there's also relationships, a relationships with women and also like 
how you need to be as a man and how your woman or partner needs to be. And yeah, he, how do you say? He guided me into listening to Patrice O'Neill. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I haven't heard of it, no. He's a stand-up comedian from several years ago, but uh, yeah, he really explains the interactions and the relationships um, scientifically. (laughs) Like any advice this guy gives with women and with relationships, I I can tell, like I verified it works. But yeah, let's let's go back to Noster again. <laughs> I, I, I love do... that though. I, I think that's a fun point to highlight actually, because this is rarely discussed. Is that you know this is just another piece of that rabbit hole that Bitcoiners fall into is the the, the more traditional roles of you know masculinity and femininity. How back you know going back into the years and the decades when that was more prevalent everything just worked better. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we, we are told in the modern word world that it's, these things are bad now and you can just feel these, uh, these forces just pulling everyone into the center and just trying to turn humans into this homogenous goo of like neutral genderlessness. And that's a, that's a very dangerous place to go when you look through history. For me, Fiat is just guiding humans to not do what nature wanted them to do. <laughs> exactly. It's anti-nature. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But uh, th- th- maybe that's also a topic for a different time, the relationships and the Patrice O'Neill. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I'll do a little bit of research on that. Before I uh, post this episode, I'll go look through some of his videos and find a good one to throw in the show notes for people to check out. The... You should check out the Black Phillips show. <laughs> Black Phillips is that like Patrice O'Neill as well, or someone different? It's Patrice O'Neill with two of his buddies and maybe some guests, but it's mostly okay. Patrice uh, explaining the science. <laughs> okay, I'll write that down. I love it. Yeah. So uh, back to Noster then. <laughs> so I had Noster. But yeah, it's a new thing. It's it's still a bit clunky, and yeah, I I also didn't really uh, change my profile pic. I, I was just lurking. I was just <laughs> finding some value from Bitcoiners, and that's it. But then, yeah, my friend he, he has a lot more time, and uh, he started making memes and uh, sharing his knowledge. And yeah, he was he was getting sets. <laughs> he was getting zapped. And I was getting a little bit jealous. I was like, I also want some more sets. <laughs> and yeah, at a certain Don't point. we all want some more sets, my friend? Yeah, yeah. You never have enough. <laughs> and then I was at the point that I didn't want to consume anymore. Like I consumed so much knowledge of Bitcoin, Carnivore, and uh, the Patrice O'Neill also. So I decided to be more productive and creative and try to give yeah, some value back. <laughs> so I also started memeing. I also started uh, trying to give people answers to their questions or uh, just to make a positive impact on someone. <laughs> and yeah, uh, like Nostra is so great. Like it's just so many like-minded people. Like there's also normies on on Noster, but mostly it's yeah, it's Bitcoin and carnivore people. Eh? Hey, you would think it's mostly people who are getting uh, banned from other social media because they don't want the truth to come out. Hey, that's my opinion on it. <laughs> Uh, no, you can completely sense that on there. It's really the people who are having free speech for the first time, and they're just letting it fly. Yeah, and it's yeah. a beautiful thing to witness because, like you said, it's it's pretty much always people who are telling a little bit too much truth, and they just mm-hmm. get deplatformed. And yeah. no matter how any how much anyone thinks that Elon Musk is like this this hero figure that will finally give them free speech, it's it's not going to happen that way in the long term. That's not how centralized systems work. You cannot have a centralized god king over who gets to say what it's never going to happen properly because you have so many other 
influences. You've got the shareholders, you've got the governments who can just knock on a door and, you know, pass down bans or, you know, legal action until they, you know, submit to their rule, you know. <laughs> These centralized platforms just have way too much power over that stuff, even if they don't want to. Even if the the most perfect, amazing, you know, good person possible becomes CEO, it doesn't matter. Because they, everyone has a price, everyone can be taken over, everyone can be coerced by the government with enough time and, you know, force. So, and, and, and like you said, the, the payment side of it, the, just the fact that it has natively integrated zapping, which is the, the verb for people who don't know for sending sats for your posts. Um, it's so cool. It's so cool. You just like link up your lightning wallet and you just start shit posting. <laughs> yeah, and if you, really you post awesome. good memes and good notes and good things mm -hmm. that, you know, people enjoy, the culture is really rallying around the zapping. So mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to get that big zap that's going to pay for a, a couple meals that week. And, you know, and the sky is the limit, especially because, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but one of the things that Primal added, this, this very popular client, is mm -hmm. that it shows the the top zaps on a post right there under the post so now oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people have more incentive to give more and more zaps and mm -hmm. bigger amounts because then they get featured there under this popular post so like for me personally um when lynn alden posted her really awesome nostra article a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, i forgot the exact title of it i'll put it in the show notes but just incredible she does such good long form essays about these technologies and I immediately jumped in and did like a, a big zap. I can't remember. It was at least several thousand sats. Yeah. And I, I held the top spot for a while. So everyone that came and retweeted or in, in liked that note, they got to see my, my zap there at the top there. And they see that I'm helping, you know, give back value to the community. So it's like, even, it doesn't matter if you're selfish or not, even the selfish people that just want to be seen and see that they're, they're giving out money and being a good member of the community. That's great. <laughs> we want you too. This yeah. is, it, everyone is helped by this because the the content creators are getting more money for their content and uh it's just a, a fantastic incentive structure for everyone to want to create better content people are getting rewarded for the best content and it's a free market of clients so all these new ideas are coming out constantly to help you know encourage more uh, value for value interaction yeah and it's also a great way to directly be connected with um yeah i don't know how to describe it like with people you look up to or people i i'm not gonna say admire but for instance with uh jack mallers like um i've been waiting on strike <laughs> to come to europe for quite a while and I don't know when it was, but yeah, it was two weeks before the launch here in Europe, but I was hitting him up on Noster. I'm like, hey, guy, <laughs> when strike Europe? And he actually responded like, yeah, in two weeks. And yeah, two weeks later, strike is here. So, I'm, oh, fuck, yeah, this is awesome. Like, in which other platform do you have things like this? Like, you don't have this on Facebook. You don't have this on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. like it's only on Noster. And and a big reason why is because once people understand Noster and its potential, and how much it solves the censorship problem, and the algorithm problem, and all the other problems from the centralized platforms, they people feel just much safer to put all their energy into it and mm -hmm. really actually focus on it, replying to people, building their audience there, engaging more. Because on all the other platforms, you have a danger of just getting rug pulled at any second. Yeah. You could have your entire account just taken down. And that can't happen on Nostra. You cannot be banned. <laughs> it, it's, it's not how that works. It's not how a protocol-based social media works. If, you know, if, if certain relays kick you off or certain clients kick you off, then i mean i don't even know if that could happen this is where yeah, like, yeah, my yeah, knowledge they, starts hitting the wall okay, clients can probably block you too today. right uh, but like if any of these pieces start blocking you then you can still function on, on all the other relays and all the other clients and all oh by the way 
your your audience members will see that they got, you got kicked off of this thing and they will shit on that relay that did that because they want to see your content so it's it's a free market in action for free speech you know yeah. they will stay in line and only you know remove the the really bad stuff that people don't actually want to see and yeah. there there's all these actual filters that work that people have the control of what they want to filter out like mm -hmm. you know of course there's certain content that you know you and i are not going to want to see on mm -hmm. a completely open wild west of content you know like but this is why you you get to choose which relays you want to follow which content feeds you want to see it's just in your control it's not in twitter's control or instagram's control it's it's your power in your hands i think even if they kick you off the relays you can even make your own relay yeah if yeah. every single relay kicks you off you can just start your own uh -uh. <laughs> and just tell people hey i'm on the the Ben Worman relay. If you want to see my content, you just connect to this and then boom. I mean, mm -hmm. you're invincible because then anyone can follow you there. They just follow your relay. And it's, it just gives, it decentralizes the, the data servers and puts the power in everyone's hand to put their content out to their relay. And if, and if your content sucks and if you're just putting out terrible content and you get blocked everywhere, you start your own relay, no one's going to connect to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you have good content and you get blocked everywhere, you put out your relay, everyone's going to, you know, everyone has the power to continue following you mm -hmm. and seeing your content. It's beautiful. It's also, like you said, I, that's the price of freedom. You're also going to see things that you don't want to see, but you have the option. Like if you don't want to see certain things, it's perfectly possible. <laughs> yeah. And certain relays will do that automatically. You don't have to like wait until you see the, you know, there's the gnarly shit out there. Yeah. block it you just find the relays that are filtering that already mm -hmm. and there there's going to be you know really good relays in the future i mean there already are like paid relays i haven't even gotten into that but yeah, you I can pay don't. money for certain relays that have like very curated feeds that you can choose yourself mm -hmm. um so you can just completely avoid you know seeing the the dark shit out there that you don't want to see <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> And just, you can just start by, you know, just not even looking at the global feed at all and just following certain people right from the get go. And then you're only going to see them and you just build up your follower base <laughs> and you don't see any of that stuff anyway. Yeah, the, the funny thing is I never follow the global feeds. Like I instantly knew who I wanted information from and I just yeah. follow them. <laughs> and that, and that's where Noster really is powerful because I mean, in a completely open system, of course, the global feed is just going to be a shit mess, you know, because <laughs> anyone can post anything. It's just going to be, it's like Omegle all over again. It's just like you, if you open this box, you don't know what's coming out. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so just by having the, the right people that you want to follow, then you, it's just instant high signal all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want, I took a few screenshots of some funny and interesting things that I experienced with, uh, with yeah. North. Sure. Let's do, do you see the, the screen sharing button on the bottom? I haven't done this in a while. Uh, wait, uh, should be a little share button on the bottom of your screen there. Yeah. Try that out. Yeah. So, uh, there was someone asking a question. So he starts like, I have a dumb Bitcoin question. What makes some wallets better than others? And then uh, some guy replied, are you asking about hardware or, or software or both? And then my friend intervenes. <laughs> Let's make sure we use the most correct language. All wallets are software. There is no such thing as a hardware wallet, only signing devices. Like... If you have a discussion on any other platform, people will will um, try to insult you or get angry that you made them feel dumb. But this guy is like, yes, you are correct. My apologies. And he sent them 500 sets to correct him on, 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 a, <laughs> a, on a question, actually. <laughs> like, where does this happen? <laughs> Yeah, just like completely just like, oh, thanks for the help. Like you added value to my brain. You you corrected me. Here's some sats for yeah, your yeah. <laughs> It's like you gave Super me value. Cool. I give you value back. Yes. <laughs> like this is so awesome. <laughs> yes, love it. And then uh, 
It's like from the Condalorian. One of the things I immediately loved about Noster when I joined was that I was no longer surrounded by people talking about how Bitcoin could be used, but rather by people actually using Bitcoin. And this is also amazing. So cool. Yes. Yes. It's happening, baby. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Um, and then this one was from a, from a cannabis uh, uh, seed bank, sorry. <laughs> and um, I read their post and I also found it wholesome. Hello, this is Dynafam Seeds, a cannabis feminized seed bank, ready to use Noster after we got our Instagram Dynafam Seeds official feed suddenly closed. After more than 10 years there, we had hundreds of pictures and almost 150k followers. But in the blink of an eye, this corporate-owned social media decided to definitively suspend our, our account. We know Noster is still a small place, but just like a young seedling, if it's provided with water, nutrition, uh, light and love, it has the potential to grow healthy and huge. And we really love the ideas of freedom and sovereignty behind this protocol. So here we are, ready to learn how to use this tool, create notes, and share our favorite pictures. Beautiful. And that is an exact example of what people should be scared of happening to them. 150,000 yep. followers on Instagram just gone poof in an instant, like nothing they could do about it. Yeah, and imagine... Crazy. If you did your business only through social media, like you get wrecked instantly. <laughs> yeah. That's what hopefully yeah. they, they, I mean, unfortunately, most, most people will not be able to use those audience they've built on these centralized platforms to mm -hmm. push people over to their Noster. Instead, they're going to keep, keep going and keep trusting that they're not going to get banned <laughs> until it happens. And then they don't have those 150 followers to say, Hey, come join us on Noster. Yeah. You know, that's the smart thing to be doing right now for people with big accounts is to start bringing people over now, start building up your base <laughs> there as your at least your emergency backup plan. Yeah. Because, you know, it, hopefully they were able to do that, but if not, then that's even more brutal because then then they don't have that audience to tell them where they went to, that they uh -huh. they found a promised land. <laughs> uh I love yeah. these screen. These are great picks, dude. I love these screenshots. This is great. Oh yeah, I have a few more. <laughs> so I think now you oh, there can we go. see. Cool. Uh, uh. So yeah, the love is Bitcoin. They posted like a uh, post proof of apps. <laughs> if your apps are tighter, I zap you. If not, <laughs> you zap me. <laughs> and yeah, I'm doing carnivore. I'm working out. My apps look great. So yeah, <laughs> it's that time of I got some sets, yeah. uh, some zaps, <laughs> 69 sets. Amazing. I got to meet her at the conference. She's super nice. She's okay. great. Yeah. yeah. She's in Nashville. She's wonderful. Yeah. You're a bit closer to all the Americans than me. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I, it was, uh, it was an easy, easy decision to go there, but for you, maybe not so much. It's more of a plane ticket. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I'm still working Fiat. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know mm. there, there are more uh, conferences popping up every year, so I'm sure there will be some more in Europe. I know there's one in Amsterdam coming up. So, Yeah, for now, I'm just uh, trying to stack more sets. <laughs> exactly. That's the way to do it. Uh, yeah, I still have, have a few more pictures. Yeah, for sure. All right, like Jor. Yeah, yeah, this one is amazing. Like, here's why Bitcoin and Nostra will win. We've been doing a live golf show, golf show every week for the last few years. We haven't made a dime from YouTube and Spotify. We were streaming on Twitter where we had 150 to 200 viewers every show. Then Elon made us get a verified account in order to stream on there. Instead of paying and verifying, we streamed the show on ZapStream. <laughs> An Anon zapped us 2,100 sets and said 
can't do this one on Twitter. <laughs> so we made more money in one show on Laster than we did the last 176 shows in Fiat World. <laughs> it's only a matter of time before many, many more people will figure this out. Be glad you're here now. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause- because people, there's so many people out there that want to, you know, show love to the people that are creating content that they enjoy. Mm-hmm. And once you just remove the the barriers to being able to do that, you never know what's going to happen. I've certainly, I've gotten some excellent, you know, just random zaps to my wallet that I just wasn't expecting. I was just doing what I was always doing, just posting, and you just get rewarded. Once you start nostering, like... You wake up in the morning and when you look at your phone, it's like all kinds of zaps. Like, where are these coming from? <laughs> like, sometimes I'm posting memes and I'm getting zaps and I'm like, oh, people like my meme. And then they just zap me from comments I made like a while ago. <laughs> like, it's really amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And... uh I don't know if you can see the next. Yep, I can see this one. Mm-hmm. Um, Humiliation ritual. <laughs> yeah. So uh, somebody's Twitter friend said he was put to full KYC, including an embarrassing session on webcam in order to get his Twitter account back. <laughs> he doesn't understand why it happened. It all seemed arbitrary. <laughs> Please, I don't want this to happen to me. What can I do? <laughs> but I don't know if you can read uh, underneath, but the guy had to do jumping jacks in front of his webcam. No way. For yeah. Twitter verification? Apparently. <laughs> You're kid- I mean, I shouldn't even be shocked at this because I've, I've had to, you know, for other platforms... They make you like write something random on a piece of paper and hold it up and over your head, and they give Isn't you these super like specific instructions just so they know that you're actually you. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I I never heard of any <laughs> of those. Oh, I'm for sure. I've seen those. Yeah, it really is so dystopian. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and for for listeners, KYC stands for Know Your Customer. It's basically yeah. just like a way for these companies to confirm that you're real and not a robot which is you don't have to do on Noster because you have your npub and that's you yeah. and your your private key and your public key are how you prove you are who you are so when you plug in your your uh, public key you can see everything you can see the feeds and then when you put in your private key that's when you can actually take control of the account and post things and post comments Never yeah, going to need to do jumping jacks or hold up a piece of paper yeah. with something written on it. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, I keep both my Nostra keys and my Bitcoin key at the same place. For me, it's yeah. as important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the last one. There we go. Cool. Uh, it's uh, from my friend. <laughs> he recently posted it and I was like, yeah, guy, uh, I'm going to use this. Uh. <laughs> So, Stacking Beats writes, Others have said this before before me, but damn, the full realization just washed over me on how Noster is really going to be the gateway drug to Bitcoin for many. Yes. For example, all the people from the UK that have had friends telling them to study Bitcoin for years, but never did. The way things are going there lately, they may... Be quite pleased to hear there's a way to voice an opinion without going to jail. Right. <laughs> yeah. So those friends can now go. Um, so those friends can now go <laughs> here, old chap, try this out. <laughs> then you play it cool and wait until they ask, what's with this lightning symbol? <laughs> then, that's your you to hit them up with a so remember that thing that I've been talking about you for the last five years exactly. free to exchange words free to exchange value no permission I need to go retweet a lot of these or repost I need to get that out of my vocabulary I need to repost all <laughs> these great ones that you're showing me here those are excellent those are so beautifully put it's yeah. and, and that last one for sure I mean it's just the perfect bridge over into Bitcoin for people because so many people out there, I mean, they love 
social media. They're used to social media. They're comfortable with it. The only thing, well, not the only thing, obviously, but the big difference for them is that it has like a, a zapping function. That's the first thing they see. Like, oh, was this like it was a little lightning bolt, you know? <laughs> and oh, that that's how you can send Bitcoin around instantly, permissionlessly with anyone, anytime. And this is one of the things that Lynn Alden mentioned it in her recent article, which uh, I'm not sure if you've read it, but it's it's excellent. She talked about how powerful that is. That's something that we're really underrating mm-hmm. in an Oscar world is how basically having a built-in Venmo with actual sound money, not fiat <laughs> that can be blocked by Venmo and PayPal. They've literally kicked people off their platform for stupid shit. Yeah. You can't kick anyone off Noster. So you have like a, a permanent Venmo there that you can yeah. just, you know, have real money sent to you sound money. And then you can move it away to your cold storage wallet and it's there. It's yours. It can't mm-hmm. be taken away by anyone. Uh-huh. And so many people out there don't know how big of a deal that is until they're in a situation like the UK, which is total madness right now where people are literally getting sent to jail for things that they're commenting on, on Facebook. You know, it's crazy. And there's just so many wild dystopian things happening under a lot of people's noses. A lot of people don't know about it because they're just watching the mainstream media. They don't see these stories, but we've, those that have been paying attention know that it's coming and you might as well base up now on Noster by Bitcoin, yeah. be ready for when it happens to you because it's, it's coming for everybody. Eventually the train doesn't stop. No. Yeah. Imagine how your life would have looked if you only discovered like Bitcoin and Carnivore and Noster in 10 years, like, uh, I'm, I'm so happy we're so early. Yeah, man. And, and my goal, and I think a lot of our goal is just to help more people discover these solutions earlier and earlier, because yeah. I think the average age, most people, I know that the average age, most people find Carnivore is like in their forties and fifties. Uh, okay. because I've, I've done surveys of that on socials yeah. and asked, and I, I've talked to other big you know, carnivore creators. Like there's one guy named Dave Mack. I did an interview with recently and I kind of connected with him. Like, what do you think the average age is of the people that come on and want to share their carnivore story? And it's definitely you know, Gen Xers mostly, um, hardly any millennials and even less Gen Z have figured it out. And uh, yeah. so I just think that if we can just bring that average age lower and lower and lower until people are just being born into this, into their healthiest selves with good food, good money, good social media that can't be banned, we're just going to completely elevate humanity. And that's why I, I just don't find it hyperbolic at all to say that these three things are going to make such a huge difference in the world. I'm so excited to see where it goes. Yeah, for me, it's the four things. The Patrice is also the way to go. <laughs> the, like the relationship side? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait like, to check it out. Yeah, look. <laughs> it, it really made me aware of so many mistakes I made. And I can mm. also say it's also because of fiat. Yeah, that that is a rabbit hole. And that, for me, the guy that I really credit with helping me out figure out figure out a lot of things I was doing wrong was a guy on YouTube. His name is coach Corey Wayne. I, I know a, about him. Have you heard? He's, he's yeah. pretty big and he's, he's excellent. I mean, he just, he mostly is talking to men, just like giving them examples of how we need to get our shit together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically we need to get healthier, get our testosterone up, figure out how women actually work and learn how to be the strong masculine man in a relationship. And this yeah. is something that so many men have just never known. I for sure didn't know this for most of my life when I was eating a bunch of plants and had no testosterone in my body and was this needy little boy when I was around women. You know, I, I just yeah. had nothing figured out. And this is why fixing your health is foundational. Because yeah. once your testosterone increases and your confidence increases, then everything gets easier. Things just start to come together and make sense. Mm-hmm. And you're more open to these new ideas. So yeah, I mean, that's a whole, whole other rabbit hole that I would love to maybe save for a future episode. I, once I look into that guy you recommended and uh, yeah. continue learning myself, because there's, I mean, that's just an infinite 
learning right there is just how men and women work and how to fix this, you know, the, the, the relationships problem. Because if you look at pretty much any data out there, the divorce rates are skyrocketing, mm. just walking around in public, seeing couples, they just don't look happy together. We got some fixing to do there. Yeah. So that's, a. I think we need to put our, carnivore bitcoiner brains to this task and figure this mm -hmm. out too because there's going to be a solution there we know it there, there's solutions to all these problems we just got to figure it out so yeah uh what me and my friends mainly try to do is what are the things that are uh, hindering us in life or where we can improve at and yeah try to find the best things to learn from like, yeah, you need to save for the future. You need to have a stable financial income or, or like a reserve. So yeah, then you go to Bitcoin. Then you want to be healthy so you can survive to, uh, to make it into the future so you can uh, benefit from your Bitcoin. So yeah, you need a healthy life. So you go carnivore. And yeah, you need some social interacting and some people to learn from. And yeah, <laughs> that's when you get to master. And then, yeah, then the only thing that's really, that I'm really looking for is how can I improve my relationships or, or what, or find the things that I should change. And then, yeah, like, <laughs> I have the four, the four things that I was looking for, I found, and now you can really spend time on the bigger things. Like you can spend time in philosophy and yeah, in bonding and making the friendship better and making each other better. Like with Bitcoin is it's really people helping each other constantly, but it's not like, oh, that guy helped me. That's one. That guy gave me the tools to help myself. And that's so, that's so special. Like I, I, I thanked my friend so many times, but he also said like, you're the one who did the work. So it's not only me that did, that did everything. Yeah. I love it, man. I couldn't have said that better myself. It's, it's the old, uh, old phrase. Giving a man a fish, giving a man a fish versus teaching yep. a man how to fish. Yep. It really just is about giving people the tools they need to find these rabbit holes themselves, get down into these, you know, interesting topics that we've all learned about, figure out how they mm -hmm. apply to our own lives. And ultimately, from a grassroots level, this will fix the world as we get more and more people on board, more and more people find these things that upgrade everybody and it just brings the entire civilization to a higher level and yeah <laughs> i just love talking about all these things together man i i think that we could probably start wrapping this up we've been talking for a while here an hour and a half should give people some good things to chew on uh I is there so. anywhere else that people should follow you or should i just drop your end pub in the show notes just only Noster. like i don't have anything else no. <laughs> <laughs> Noster only this yeah, is the yeah. end game man yeah. Very cool. Well, I will put that down in the show notes so everyone can go give you a follow. I definitely recommend doing so. Yeah. Otto Harry, I appreciate you very much for sending it today, just coming on here. I know this is the first time you've done anything like this. So I really appreciate you coming on and chatting. It's been excellent getting to know you today, sir. Yeah, and I'm very grateful you gave me a chance to speak. Like, I've been talking to people for two and a half years. Nobody wants to listen except my friend, of course. And it really feels good to, uh, to, to get the things out yes. <laughs> with somebody who really wants to listen and also can contribute. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, the pleasure is all mine. It was so great talking to you. And uh, I look forward to doing more things like this, just bringing more people from Nostra, more Nostra friends, people that have completed all those rabbit holes we talked about because there mm -hmm. aren't very many out there right now <laughs> in the... In August 2024, the amount of people that have Bitcoin, Carnivore, and Noster all figured out is really small. So we should be pretty darn proud of where we are yeah. and excited to continue bringing more people onto that train because it's a, it's a powerful place to be. And uh, we're building the future, baby. I love it. <laughs>
appreciate yeah. you coming on, sir. We'll talk soon. We'll be in touch on Nostra and uh, we'll keep in touch, my friend. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Uh, just to give a, an advice to people? Of course, go for it. I would say never lose your childlike curiosity. Never stop searching for the truth. And I don't know who it was, Robert Kiltz? Like he uh, yeah, was the doctor. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, uh, because he had also a knee knee problem like me. But yeah, it's, it's unrelated. I just want to say, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you're not a failure. You're a great human being. Hey, not not the Robert, but the, the people in general. Like, you're just eating shit. You're just being distracted, and you're just being lied to. Like, you need to do the research and the experimentation yourself but Amen. there is a way out there is a whole better more positive world just waiting for you <laughs> absolutely and it all comes down to self-sovereignty yeah. doing all these things yourself and figuring things out yourself and, and it's testing a lot, things yourself it's a lot uh it's just a lot of responsibility just yeah, don't rely on the centralized system and be your own centralized system, I would say. <laughs> Bringing responsibility back is such a good thing. And a lot of mm-hmm. people don't really understand that. They've been brainwashed by all the centralized systems out there we've been talking about to convince people that it's bad to be self-sovereign and be in control of yourself. They're like scared of it. They think that, you know, they need some daddy somewhere to take care of them. Yeah. Um, that's part of their business models that make people feel like they're dependent on this gigantic centralized government. You need the central banks, you need the pharmaceutical industry, you need the, the mainstream media to tell you their truth. When, you, you, as we you know, the, it's all the nonsense. experts, the experts, yeah, uh, safe and effective. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, everyone out there, continue digging, continue learning, continue zapping. Follow our boy Hoddle Harry on Noster, and we'll see you later. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. See you later, brother. Have a nice day.